We're going to be getting deep and sharing some truth about the dangers of false doctrines and possibly even touch and base about some things to do with cults and different types of things in church that really are not of God. So I welcome you on today. I have a very two very special guests, one which will be anonymous today because her very life could be at risk if for things that she's sharing. She's been through a lot, and I actually had to go one time and actually pull her out of a place that basically was holding her hostage, and that's some pretty deep stuff, and that's why it's so important that we teach people the dangers of false doctrines and what that really involves. So I want to welcome my dear sister in Christ, Laura Maxwell. She's an amazing woman of God, known around the world for her TV work, for her books, for um, radio work, and she's just a very gifted woman who can really take the bandages off and teach about the occult and spiritualism because that was a big part of her life for so long. And praise God, God turned that all around, and he uses her as a mighty warrior on the battlefield, teaching the people the truth that needs to be brought into the light. And my other special guest, um, she has learned from her own experiences. In fact, when I shared one of the broadcasts that was of Laura and Jerry Blaze, that was from several years ago about the occult, my friend messaged me and said that really opened her eyes to make her even see more, that that's what she was in at the time, not even being aware of it. So I want to kick this off and welcome everybody here on Reaching Out Radio International, where we're reaching out to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, sharing the gospel and the message of the cross into the nations. We are very adamant about not adding to or taking away from the word of God. And all we do, we want to glorify God. And our broadcasts aren't meant to offend people, but we don't want to have blood on our hands, brothers and sisters. We want to be sharing truth to you so you know the truth that you don't go to hell. Because when you draw your last breath or the Lord's return, we're talking eternal. These things of this earth shall pass away. But eternal life is where my focus is on and why I do the work to lead people to spend eternal salvation with the Lord Jesus Christ. Gracious and heavenly Father, I humbly come before your throne of grace, Father God. Lord, first, I just thank you for allowing me to serve you, Father God, to allowing me to be able to do radio and connect me with such amazing people for the kingdom, Father God. Lord, I just pray that everything that comes out of our mouth today will be anointed by you, God, that you lead us in truth, God, and have your perfect will, God. Lord, let this word and these teachings be planted in the hearts of people, Father God, that they may know you and receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise be to God. And there may be some of you out there listening that don't truly understand what a false doctrine is. A doctrine is a set of ideas or beliefs that are taught or believed to be true. But what we really want to bring you into truth of knowing is about Bible doctrines. Bible doctrines refers to teachings that align with the revealed word of God. The Bible, false doctrine is any idea that adds to the Bible, that takes away from the Bible, that contradicts the Bible or nullifies the doctrine given in God's word. For example, any teaching about Jesus that denies his virgin birth is a false doctrine because it contradicts the clear teaching of Scripture. And please get a pen and paper down, and I'm going to give you some scriptures I want you to study um, after the broadcast. And the scripture that I want you to look up there is Matthew 1 and 18. And in Matthew 1 and 18, the scripture tells us, Now that the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way, when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And I really want you to um, study the word and understand if it lines up the word, then you know that it's true drops and brother and sisters. As early as the first century A.D., false doctrine was already infiltrating the churches, and many of the letters in the New Testament were written to address those very errors. In Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 and 9, it says, No other gospel. I am astonished that you are so quickly 
deserting him, who you called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say it again. If anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. And they're talking about false doctrines there, brothers and sisters. And in the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verses 20 through 23, again, that's Colossians, chapter 2, 20 through 23, it says, If with Christ you died to the elemental spirits of the world, why, as if you were still alive in the world, do you submit to regulations? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, which is referring to things that all perish as they are used, According to human precepts and teachings, these have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-made religion and ascetism and severity to the body, but they are of no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. And that's some deep scripture, brother and sisters. And in Titus 10 through 11, or I'm sorry, Titus chapter 1, 10 through 11, for there are many who are insubordinate, empty talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision party. They must be silent since they are upsetting whole families by teaching for shameful gain what they ought not to teach. And boy, are we not seeing that in the world today, brothers and sisters. Paul exhorted his protege, Timothy, to guard against those who are peddling heresies and confusing the flock. If anyone advocates a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words, those of the Lord Jesus Christ, and with the doctrine confirming to godliness, he is conceited and understands nothing. In 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6, verses 3 to 4, it says, If anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the teaching that accords with godliness, he is puffed up with conceit and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy craving for controversy and for quarrels about words, which produce envy, decision, slander, evil, and suspicion. And I know, brothers and sisters, even on things that I see on Facebook and things my friend that's on here with me today has shared with me and just in this world, on the news, out in public, everywhere I go, you can see the enemies busy at work trying to pull people down with false doctrines. There's a lot of preachers and teachers that want to sugarcoat things because they're more worried about getting people in the seats and about the numbers at their churches and how much money they can bring in instead of teaching people the true message of the cross and salvation that the only way to God our Father is through Jesus Christ and his death and receiving him. They pull you into things that are of evil, that are not of God, that are of self, and those are the things that I want to be addressing. And as followers of Christ, we have no excuse for remaining ignorant of theology because we have the whole counsel of God. Acts 20 and 27 tells us, For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. It is available to us. The Bible is complete. As we study to show ourselves approved unto God. And in 2 Timothy 2 and 15, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. We are less likely to be taken in by smooth talkers and false prophets when we know God's word. We are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. Ephesians 4 and 14 touches base with that, for it tells us, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. So I really want to um, bring my guests on with me now. And I wanted to touch base with you on some of those things. And um, Laura, uh, my beautiful sister in Christ, Laura Maxwell, that's on there with us today, I would really love to have you introduce yourself, sister, 
and share a little bit. I know there's so many that follow you and you impact so many lives that we will have some new listeners today. So would you please introduce yourself and kind of share in your heart about the doctrines and, you know, in your own experiences, how you've seen this in your life. Hi, Montel, and thank you so much for inviting me onto your show. It's an honor to speak with you and your audience and your friend also today. Um, Yeah, basically, um, for about the last 10 years, um, I've been sharing my story and also teaching a little bit on uh, New Age and Occult and so on. Because about 15 years ago, I came out of that background and I became a Christian back about 15 years ago. And so for about the last 10 years, I've been sharing TV, radio. um, My story has also appeared in books and magazines and so on, even um, educational books, for example, um, school children's books across Australia and New Zealand featured my story in their book um, about religion and cults and so on. Um, So it's really been an honour sharing with people worldwide and folks get in touch with me and again and again and again I hear the exact same types of experiences that people have been through, a wide range of experiences and So in actual fact, my story is not at all unique. It's actually very, very common. People within the the, the New Age circles and paranormal groups and so on is very common with them, but it's not something they will want to talk about a lot because it's not a good advert, if you like, for paranormal um, experimentation. So it's not something that's discussed a lot. Um... So, yeah, and also, as you say, false doctrines and so on that that are in the church today, um, I do share with with audiences as well. Also, because I have actually fallen into some of those myself, and that's why I, I do share. And it's embarrassing to admit what you have fallen into, but I think that we, if we have, then it, it's it's critical that we do share with the public because then we can warn others and when they hear our stories they can recognise, oh wow, that's what I'm involved in. I didn't even realise that it was false. I didn't realise. Um, but now that this sister's explaining it and describing it, wow, I'm in that too. And then it helps so many people to 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 see the truth and um, to come out, to seek help and come out. So yeah, basically that's it's an honour for me to do that and really my my mother and I were involved in new age, all sorts of new age activities and belief systems Um, new thought, that that, that type of thing and the whole arena of believing that um, you know, we, we are all spiritual beings and that it doesn't matter what religion you follow if any, but that really we adhered to the age of Aquarius type of teaching where we were taught by so-called spirit guides and ascended masters and so on that the world was reaching um, an age where we would all be coming together in in peace peace and love and there would be no more uh, division there would be no more um, intolerance that everyone could be inclusive and such that whether someone was an atheist or not, whether they followed any type of religion, whatever it may be, that we would all come together um, as a a global group and, for example, do things like meditation and yoga, which would um, enhance our spiritual vibrations. They would describe it like that. And really that we would all be under the one God, all all paths lead to God, as it were. Although saying that, the, the teachers that taught that, the New Age teachers, going right back to the 1830s, the most famous teacher was Madame Helena Blavatsky, 
termed mother of the new age. She was a medium, a spiritualist medium, and she believed she channeled um, dead humans, you know, so-called ghosts, and she believed she channeled spirit guides and ascended masters. However, she believed that Lucifer was this god that we all would come under um, in the last days and join together with, and that Lucifer, the Bible was false, that Lucifer did not fall and become Satan, um, the evil enemy of God and of people, but that he is still Lucifer, he's still a good angel, uh, the angelic being or God, and that all religions would come under him in the, in the end times. Uh, interestingly enough, actually the Bible does share about that, but it, it has a, a different um, it explains it in a different way and it shows that, that Lucifer did fall and become Satan and that yes, in the end times, people will all come together in this love and peace, New Age type gathering of people. And however, that Lucifer, yes, would be the head of that, but that he is actually Satan. That's how the Bible describes it. And people who come under that deception, really, it's a powerful deception. It's very believable, and yet it does lead to spiritual death. It leads to demonic oppression and demonic possession, and that's really where my mother and I found ourselves eventually. And long story short, yes, we did yoga, we did meditation, and a host of other New Age type things, but those two in particular were recommended by spiritualist mediums and and yoga gurus and so on because they said yoga and meditation deliberately open you to spirit vibrations so they were pleased that the average person was doing these things maybe just for health benefits because they knew the average person won't even realize it's connecting them with spirits it's opening you to spirits um, again what does the bible say about that these spirits are not friendly spirits after all they are demonic spirits, and the Bible's quite clear on that. And so, you know, long story short, my mother's house became what she thought was haunted, and she and I were under attack by these so-called spirits. We thought it was dead relatives, we thought it was spirit guides, but obviously when they began to attack us and so on, we knew there was something far wrong. Now, some spiritualist mediums kindly try to help, and we loved them all, of course. Of course, we did. They're uh, lovely people, but um, nothing really would help. And so, therefore, we got disillusioned w with that, and we left the spiritualist church that we were members of. We still believed in it, but we just left that church because they couldn't help us. We thought we could battle it on our own. We tried calling out to different kinds of gods, um, gods that we hadn't tried before, goddesses and ascended masters, and actually it only got worse. Now, one night in particular, there were several occasions where my mother's life was endangered, involving uh, traffic incidents and involving being in the home and being taken under trance against her will when she didn't want to go into trance. And when she woke up again, so to speak, the whole kitchen was engulfed in flames. The fire brigade had to extinguish that. So it was a very dangerous situation. One night, um, she was still being attacked by these entities. And she called out for looking for a, a higher master to come and help her. Now, an angel turned up. Well, she thought it was an angel. And it just goes to show you really cannot trust any beings that <laughs> appear to you. Just because they tell you their name and tell you where they claim to come from does not mean they do. So this is a prime example. It looked like an angel. She immediately thought this was the Lucifer, um, the angel of light, the, the torch bearer, that he had come to rescue her. But as he approached the room filled with intense evil and it, the diabolical presence and the intense wickedness in his eyes. She suddenly in that moment realized he was not Lucifer and she 
shouted on Jesus Christ. Now, immediately, this being and all the other beings in the room vanished. But she didn't give her heart to Jesus Christ that night because she still wasn't sure who Jesus was. He may have been an ascended master, she thought. So things continued much the same, really. And around about this time, she also went to her doctor and asked for sleeping pills because the spirits were awakening her in the middle of the night. She was having so-called sleep paralysis and attacks and so on. And, of course, the doctor said, I don't believe that you're hearing voices or, or seeing these visions. I believe you're schizophrenic. And she incarcerated her into the local psychiatric hospital. Now, this was a great shock to us all. And even way back then when we were spiritualists, we had heard of this before, that oftentimes spiritualists, mediums, channelers, channelers, <laughs> Um, can be incarcerated in psychiatric hospitals when things um, get dangerous for them. So, But it's still a shock when it happens to your mother. So she was in there, and at this time I was now in second year at university, and I met a woman, she was a Christian, and she asked me to her church, and she said, Jesus could help with this situation. Now again, I didn't really believe that, but I was desperate. We tried so many other gods and goddesses and so on. So I did go along. Um, the, the, the man who was preaching was a Christian man who had the gift of prophecy and healing. And I didn't know Christians could have those gifts. I thought only psychics could. So he, he actually did prophesy to me something about my life, which has indeed been happening the last 10 years um, you know, under the Holy Spirit's guidance, so that his prophecy was certainly true. But he also said some things that really made me think. And that night when I went home, I picked up a Bible. However, reaching my home, I developed a terrible migraine where I actually vomited outside before I even got home. I knew the spirits were furious that I had been to a Christian church. They were furious. They were I just felt that they might try to kill me, like what had happened with my mother that night when Lucifer tried to kill her. I say Lucifer, but he was probably just a demon because, as we know, Lucifer fell and became Satan. Anyway, so that night I got a Bible. I prayed something like, God, I don't know if you are real. I don't know if Jesus Christ is, is really the Savior. Um and what was going on in my life with spiritualism and so on, please help me, basically. And I opened the Bible and I came across a scripture that really was showing how these things that I've mentioned are demonic deceptions. Well, I was really quite shocked because I didn't know the Bible even said that. And over the next few days and weeks, more scriptures came to light that, that clearly show that these things are demonic deceptions. The Bible says that Satan can masquerade as if he is an angel of light. He can masquerade him and his demons, evil spirits. They can masquerade. They can appear to look like gods, goddesses, um, ascended masters, spirit guides, fairies. You know, whatever a person is willing to believe in, supernatural being, they will morph into the likeness of that being to deceive people because they want people to stay away from Jesus Christ. They want people to explore any other uh, spiritual belief um, and seek answers from, from there rather than from seeking answers from the Holy Spirit. They're very deceptive and that's how the Bible describes them. Um, and I also, of course, found out that no wonder these so-called dead relatives were attacking us because they're evil spirits masquerading as if they are the dead. Uh, and the Bible, there, there's a host of scriptures throughout the Bible that shows, you know, one, God actually told us not to attempt to um, contact the dead. And if you think of it, why would that be? Why would God actually worry about us contacting the dead if they really were contactable? You know, why would God b bother about that? But he, he loves us, he knows that they're demons and he does not want us affected by them 
clearly. Um, and, you know, there's so many scriptures that, that point this out, and I often quote a lot of these scriptures. But t- to sum up, you know, basically when someone dies and becomes a... When someone dies, they don't become a ghost, and they certainly can't get trapped on earth and become an earthbound spirit. You know, when someone dies, God immediately... God sees that death, you know, he's he, he is omnipotent. He sees that death. That person either goes to heaven or hell. They cannot get trapped on earth. God cannot, you know, lose a soul that happens to fall through the net. <laughs> as soon as a person dies, an angel takes them to heaven or a demon takes them to hell. There is no being earthbound. And not only that, once they go there, heaven or hell, they certainly cannot return. The Bible explains there is a huge gulf between. It's impossible for them to return back here to visit us. They simply can't do that. So it is a great deception. All through um, history, though, people have tried to do it. All through, no matter what culture in the world it is, people will have tried to contact their ancestors or... um, yeah, you know, ancestral worship or contacting what they think are beings um, from other planets and so on. But it all falls under the great uh, deception um, that I've just shared about. So, yeah, and, and you know, e- yes, even Christians can be caught up with these things. There's many Christians who have been and, and, and some have contacted me or I've heard about about people who have. And... You know, it's it's interesting because anything you want to know regarding these things is in the Bible. And the Bible does say, you know, it talks about in 1 1 Timothy 4, 1, in the last days, it talks about people who will abandon the faith and follow doctrines of demons. It also talks about, the Bible talks about the strong delusion. It talks about... um, (laughs) Just the fact that, you know, in Hosea it says, my people perish through lack of knowledge. Um, perish is a strong word, but it's true. It doesn't matter who you are. And, and whether, if you've maybe even been a Christian for a long time, you can still perish by being involved in, in the occult and witchcraft and New Age and so on, ghost hunting. You can literally perish these beings if they get a foothold they can actually bring devastation into your life, illness. They can bring curses and illness on your family, on your children. And yes, it can even lead to suicide and to death. So my people perish through lack of knowledge is not an um, exaggeration. People can indeed perish. And 1 John 4, 1, 3 talks about um, testing the spirits to see whether or not they are of God, like you mentioned, Montel at the beginning of the show. Even the scripture says um, about people and and falling into false doctrines, and it says even if an angel appears and tells you something that is not biblical, then <laughs> don't listen to it. So again, you know, one of the the what I'm seeing happening a lot, and it's really quite distressing, is the fact that there's many Christian movements and churches now. Um, and so on, where they literally feel they are receiving revelation from a dead preacher of yesteryear, um, or even a, a biblical character, Elijah, m- you know, Moses, wh- whoever, uh, Apostle Paul, um, you know, and they feel that this um, a- apparition is a dead preacher from Bible times, and they don't see anything wrong with that at all. They don't. They don't see that that is fitting into this exact same um, arena of being deceived by demonic spirits. So, and also angels. There's a lot of um, Christian churches now, whereby they feel that they are being given messages by angels. Now, I'm definitely not saying that an angel cannot turn up um, to to someone. We see that happening throughout the Bible, and I'm not saying it does not happen today with us. However, (laughs) it tends to be very, very rare. And if you look at the Bible, when it happens, it tends to be a very, very, very important event that the the angel wants to give information about. But in these Christian churches that tend to be into this type of thing, 
you will notice that they feel they're getting revelation from angels on a regular basis. Now, there is no, you know, mandate for that in the Bible. No, no one in the Bible was getting revelation from angels that much. Um, so again, even that itself is a red herring. And also, exactly, um, also when it tends to be mixed with certain movements, certain Christian churches that also feel, for example, that now that we're in the last days, we can get new revelation from, not from the Bible, but from the Holy Spirit or from angels. And again, that's very dangerous because if you believe you're getting new information from the Holy Spirit or from angels, you are really open to error there, especially when even the Bible tells us we have to test prophecies, for example. You know, the Apostle Paul, the other uh, speakers and teachers and writers throughout the Bible were constantly saying, test. So there you are, the Apostle Paul saying that when he's talking about fellow colleagues or even about himself. We, we, you know, they had to test what was being purported to being um, said by the Holy Spirit. So we certainly just can't accept everything a so-called angel um, tells us or even what we think the Holy Spirit is telling us. We have to always test it. And being the ultimate test is, is what does the Bible say about that? That is absolute ultimate test um, because people can see. Oftentimes some things can look subtle and people aren't very sure. Go back to the Bible. Um, to see what it says about it because I'm a, a, a living testament to the fact of when you do get engrossed in these demonic things these you're opening a door to actual demons they are coming into your life and whether you're a Christian or not it doesn't really matter in the sense of once you open a door to demons they will get a foothold the Bible says don't give Satan um, a foothold and you will get demons in your home and, yes, even in your body. I certainly had demons cast out of me from my involvement, yes, from the New Age and the occult. But even after that, when I became a Christian and got involved in um, false doctrine and practices, I needed deliverance again because I had allowed certain demons into my life. Um, you know, the yoga demons, the meditation demons and so on that, um, I got when I was in the New Age. I was a Christian a good few years before they were even cast out of me. Again, people can think, well, I'm a Christian now, and it was a long, long time ago that I did all that stuff, so I'm, I'll be fine. There won't be any demons there. That's a, that's just not true. Unless it's literally been cast out of you, it actually will still be there. Um, as I say, gosh, it must be 20 odd years ago. That, that I last did yoga and yet the demons were still there and they were cast out me um, as I say like 15 years after that, the last time I'd done it so people do need deliverance um, to be free from these things and also of course when Christ casts the demons out of you, you are uh, cleaner as it were, it's like veils have been removed from you, you can see you can see Christ more clearly. The Bible becomes more alive to you. <clears throat> Even if you've been reading it for years, worship becomes more powerful. Prayer and intercession becomes more real. Your relationship with Christ flourishes. If you've had sinful habits in your life that you haven't been able to overcome and it confuses you, often they will, uh, you have victory over sinful areas too because the actual demons have gone. So it, it is a huge subject, but Montel, you know, it's one that the church does need to hear about and often is not preached from pulpits, which is so tragic because people need to hear it. And, um, yes, yeah, so are you still there? Yes, yes, I was just, I didn't want to interrupt you. And that's why um, I invited one of my dear friends and sisters in Christ on today. Um, for once, she heard your past teaching when he was on with Jerry, and it really opened her eyes more so to what she was involved with, and um, she asked to remain anonymous today, and I'm going to welcome her on, but um, she went through a lot of what you're talking about. She was raised in church. In fact, her dad actually was a pastor, God rest his soul, and, mm -hmm. you know, she didn't think that she would get 
pulled into things when she was visiting a church. Um, you know, she's thinking, hey, this is a church. You know, I'm doing good. These people are receiving me. They're loving me. And before long, she got so rooted in this church and their false teachings, they overtook her life, even some of her family's life. And I actually, one night, she uh, they were even controlling her phone, letting her go in and out of a house. And she called me one night, and I actually had to go to this place and remove my sister from that place. And it was a very bad situation, so I want to invite her on today. And... Um, I welcome you on, and um, like I said, she wants to re- remain anonymous. But um, we were we were talking earlier before the program, and I was asking her one of the questions I had for her today. With her being a Christian all of her life and thinking, you know, I'm never going to get pulled the wrong way, how easy was it for you to get pulled into those false teachings? It was very easy, and um, but they – the church that I went to was, you know, the Mormon church, and it was nothing what I expected. And I, and you talked at the beginning, don't take away or add from the Bible. And all my life I've been taught the Bible, and they had another book. They have a Book of Mormon, and they were teaching from it. And they were trying to tell me that it's okay to, it's okay to um, read out of this book that it's, it's another part of the Bible. And I was like, well, I've never heard of that. And I knew I've memorized scripture and stuff all my life. And I've, um, cause again, my dad was a preacher, but I thought, well, okay, maybe this is more to it than what I heard. And it was none of the people that were in the Bible were in this book of Mormon. And when I read it and the things they believe in, and they had me so brainwashed and like, I had to get rebaptized at the Mormon church, and then you have to get approved. You know, once you get baptized, it's just one baptism, and um, it's between you and God, and sometimes you make public at your church and stuff, but the whole church has to accept you, and the whole um, congregation has to accept you, and and um, I'm a tall person, and when they baptized me, like, my leg went up. So they had to redo it again and stuff. And um, the things they were teaching me was, it was very easy to fall into false doctrine. And after I heard um, Laura speak the last time when Montel shared her broadcast, it opened my eyes more to what they were doing and that I was in a um, false doctrine and stuff. Yeah, it even got to the point where you wound up – moving into their homes and like they controlled where you went and uh, the things that you ate, they tried to cut you away from your family. And um, you just basically were shut off from the world at that time. Correct. Yeah. And they believe, they believe in like, and um, as Laura was speaking a while ago, that when we die, we either go to heaven or hell. There is no nothing else. Well, they believe the people wait in another, like another kingdom, um, and you can, if you go to temple, you can get baptized for the dead. I was married to a guy who actually went to temple, and he said they have a list of people, and um, that have died that are waiting in this kingdom, and you could get baptized for them that if they didn't get a chance to get baptized, and once you do, then they could go to heaven, and it's just a Ooh. list of people and. Um, they believed in that, and I never went to temple and was baptized for the dead because I had my doubts it too. I was thinking, you know, this ain't right, but, yeah, they had um, missionaries come and talk to you, and they seem really sweet and, like, they want to help you and stuff and want to receive you, but it's just all fake. You can't drink tea or coffee. You can't go shopping on Sunday, stuff like that, and, uh, Especially their Book of Mormon, they believe in um, necessarily, not necessarily the birth of Jesus took place. They believe you should follow a prophet, um, that Joseph Smith was the prophet, and they that you should follow him and stuff like that. And and um, they controlled my life. I couldn't go nowhere. They controlled where I went, and I was sick one time, and they had a um, 
like a prayer meeting thing, and the lady whose house I lived with, she stayed home with me and everything, and I was just, at that time, I was having doubts, and I was wanting to go home, and she wouldn't let me contact my dad or nothing. She wouldn't let me call my parents. She said um, I couldn't have no contact with them at all, that I had to go to their prayer meeting and be focused on what they do, and um, you even had to eat according to um, how they wanted you to eat. Like you had to get on your knees and um, eat um, eat sometimes, and they, they believe in just different things, and they were controlling me. I didn't think I was going to get to leave, and they were even going to pay Montel to uh, turn around and go back home. They're like, because when I told them I was leaving, and I knew I was, I knew that it was brainwashing me in that, when I wanted to leave, they wouldn't let me. I mean, they, they wow. were controlling my text messages and everything. And when I called Montel, she was sitting outside in the driveway, and I was trying to get my stuff together. And they were like, we will pay her. We will give her gas money for coming over here to go back um, home if you just stay here. And I didn't want to be part of that anymore. And so finally I got my stuff and I left, and I just haven't looked back. And, um, you know, and they just, it's everything is false about what they teach. And that's what, wow. and a lot of times, because people, when you go into a church, they're talking about Jesus and you know, some people, we're all at different places in our life when it comes to our relationship with Christ. And some of us may not have as much understanding as others or, and, you know, listening even to Laura's testimony and how God used her. I mean, a lot of people are scared to share these kind of things on the radio, but I'm not. I give my host liberty, my guests liberty, because we're supposed to share these truths. And you know, as Laura was talking too, Satan can come as an angel of light. And who he knows the word, brothers and sisters, and don't think he won't try to trump it up or twist it around to use it against you. And that's a lot of what happened in my friend's situation. When she says they wouldn't let her leave, she's not exaggerating. She's not playing. I mean, they were very controlling in her life, and they were pulling her away from her parents, away from me because they knew where I was in Christ, because Laura had talked to me about them before, they even were trying to turn her against me because they didn't want her to know truth or be brought back to truth. And that's why it's so important. If if someone is not just strictly using the word of God in their teachings and and you can't back it up with the word of God, brothers and sisters, get away from it, as Laura was sharing and as my friend here is sharing. She thought what was some uh, someone that reached out to, now understand this, they reached out to her in love. They were real inviting. They were real kind. They didn't show those controlling characteristics. They didn't really get her involved into the things until basically, as I was teaching the other day, it's kind of like a web of deceit. So they sucked her into the web, and she kind of became their prey, brothers and sisters, and that's truth. And she didn't think she would fall into these things, but it can happen. And that's why it's so important that we know the Word of God, that we're in the Word of God, and we're teaching others about the Word of God. And that's why these broadcasts are so important, because they go all over the world, and there's people in places in Africa that it's never been taught true doctrine. So that's why it's so important we get the Word of God out there through them, these broadcasts. And I love having Laura on because, She shares truth, brothers and sisters. She is definitely a warrior in God's army, and God is using her in amazing ways, but yet she's a very humble, loving woman, as you can hear when she speaks. And I'm sure, Laura, too, like through um, people you've met and talked to, you've probably maybe heard some similar situations as my friend that, you know, people get sucked into what seems kind of like a cult thing or you know, they get mm-hmm. put in situations where they can't get out of, and sometimes they're scared to get out of them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I have heard it. I've, I've heard it for about two decades now, and, um, yeah, it's really extremely traumatic for people. Um, my heart goes out to you, sister, what, what you've been through. I know that you're anonymous, so I'll just call you sister. <laughs> But my heart really goes out to you what you've been through because I know that the the depth of the trauma and 
upset in that is phenomenal. Um, I think most folks won't realise what it's like unless they've been through it. It's very frightening. It's um, unbelievable, and it can take a, a good while to feel um, a certain amount of recovery from. Um, and, and just things like, you know, people can have nightmares even when they've come out. They can have nightmares. They can have flashbacks and so on. They, certain things can trigger memories from those days. And, yeah, it can take quite a while um, to, to fully recover. And not only just, um, as you know, not only just in these uh, false religions and false cults and so on, but even within... Um, the Christian community, there are some churches that that are like that in a very controlling sense and other uh, doctrine, doctrinal problems there uh, and false doctrines that when you try to leave, they threaten you with certain things. Um, I myself, when I did become a Christian, the first church I went to, I was there just maybe about eight months. And my mother was still having demonic problems, and so was I. So, But they just thought that if you're having demonic problems, you're mentally ill because you're a Christian now. There's no way demons can affect you um, or attack you. Therefore, they just didn't believe. So I then went and found, took a while, eventually found a Christian church that had the deliverance ministry. That's where they, they do with, with Jesus and and his followers did they cast out demons so i found a church that could do that and yes they did cast out a lot of demons from me however so yeah they were used definitely they were used by the holy spirit no doubt about it they had the gift of healing too the holy spirit was was there powerfully but they also had issues there as well that obviously let the the devil have a foothold and their main issue was control that was really bad to the extent of um, eventually it took me, I went to America and came back again to Scotland um, to see what churches were like over there and so on. And I realized, I actually realized I'm in a cult-like type of church. So I told them I was leaving and they told me, for example, the leaders told me I, if I left their church, I would never get close to Jesus, closer to Jesus. If anything, I would backslide and go to hell. Um, so when I left there, it was about a year for me before I could feel any recovery because it was traumatic. I had the back flashes, I had the, the, the bad dreams and so on. And even though I knew the Bible was true and what they said was false, now the Bible doesn't say if you belong to one certain church that, you know, that's how you go to heaven. But when they told me that, because it was drummed into us over the years through their sermons, it became such a mind block that it was traumatic to try and move away from that type of false teaching. So, um, of course, I was not in um, what our sister is describing that was even more controlling. I wasn't under that amount of control. But to a little extent, I, I know the trauma that's involved in that. So, sister, I really commend you um, for sharing today on radio. I'm so glad Montel helped get you out, but I really commend you for it because it takes a lot of courage to share something like that um, when you've been under that amount of control. Thank you. And even after she left, I can remember, because um, she would call me and she'd be scared because they would literally go by her home. They would call her home. They would even sometimes threaten her parents. I mean, it was a really deep situation, and, my friend was really scared for her life for a while, and it did traumatize her for a while. Um, I've known her now for mm -hmm. almost 14 years, and my friend has been through a lot in her own life. And, you know, for a long time she had low self-esteem, um, things that's been spoke over her life, the way people treat them. And I truly believe a lot of times the enemy uses that. He goes after people that are vulnerable. And he knows how to attack them in a way that pulls them in and entices them. And that's why it's so mm -hmm. important that we do know how to, you know, test the spirits, to discern spirits, to see the realness of the spirits that are trying to be a part of our life. And 
Mm-hmm. And that's something I've had to learn through all the years that I've been, you know, doing work in ministry on radio because it's like you shared, you know, um, I've even shared with my own sister personally after my mom died, she was being tormented. She really thought when she was going to my mom's um, grave because she was grieving so badly, she was there with my mom the day she passed away. And my sister for a long time blamed herself. Not that it was her fault. My mom had terminal cancer. There was nothing that could be done. And um, it was God's will that she went home. But because she was the one with her that day, And she had moved her and was the last one to turn her on her side. Well, she passed away while my sister was there. So my sister felt, oh, it's my fault. She was, she was bound in guilt and grief. And it got to the point when she was going to the cemetery that she thought she was getting actual visits from my mother. And I've tried to explain to her, do I believe that within our hearts, we can feel their spirit because the spirit lives. It says to be absent from the body is to be in the presence of the Lord. I believe the spirit lives on. Yes, I do. But I also know that, um, like you were saying earlier in the Bible, what she's dealing with is called familiar spirits. We're not supposed Mm -hmm. to try to contact our deceased loved ones, and there's a reason for that. And, you know, there's even instance, you know, a lot of that in the Bible, and that's why it's so important to study the word. But she actually started having things move around her. She had things moving her. This is the truth, moving her hand. Um, like she was going through what, as you say, paranormal experiences at the cemetery, believing this was my deceased mother contacting her, and it really messed her head up. And that's what the enemy Mm -hmm. wants to do, because we have to understand why they're called familiar spirits, because they, the, the demonic forces are all around us all the time. And they truly can know a person's character and they can make you believe it is that person because they are able to do that. Like you were saying earlier, they can morph into other things and make you believe things. Mm-hmm. And my sister, I really had to pray with her and talk with her. And sometimes she still thinks that, like, at my mom's house, it's my mom or various things. And I tell her all the time, Mama's spirit is with the Lord, honey. That's the enemy trying to mess with you, trying to make you believe things. And we're not even supposed to pray to our loved ones in heaven. I believe it's okay to say to God, I say, God, you know, let my mom know I love her or thank you for the time I have with my mother, but I don't call upon my mom to do things or things like that because that's not of God either. That would be us putting our loved one above God, and we're not supposed to do those kind of things either. But you see how when people are in vulnerable situations and when you're grieving. Montel. Oh, go ahead, Laura. (laughs) Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Montel. Um, No, that's fine. I know what you're I know what you're saying. Um to be honest, I don't even say to God tell my mama or anyone I miss them because I just feel to me it's just you know the dead they're either in heaven or in hell and it's now like God's business what's going on in heaven. Do you know it's not even any of my business and I don't even want to even pray to God to, to, to give a loved one a message from me. Do you know what I mean? I'm just like, no, it's, it's I'm not even going there because I just feel that we've even to avoid doing that. And I know that folks listening might say, oh gosh, that's a bit extreme, Laura, you know, Montel's just praying to God. I know, but I just feel that if we even do anything like that, it can. Demons are opportunists, you know, and if, if they even think we might be slightly interested to maybe go that way, they could try to get in there and, and tempt you into thinking your mum was there and so on. So, do you know what I mean? I don't even go that way at all. No, if I can respect and understand what you're saying. I completely yeah. can understand what you're saying. And because of that, because the enemies, like when we speak things out or various things, and sometimes I do meditate, you know, talk to God in quiet, but the enemy tries to find opportunities to use us, to confuse us, and especially in situations like I said, my sister and I have been grieving. Um, you know, when you're grieving, a lot of times you're broken, you're vulnerable, and it's easier for people to be attacked. Like they say, the enemy likes to kick you more so when you're down. So I understand what you're saying. That opens the door for the enemy to come in and try to confuse you or pull you into a direction to try to pull you into a way making you believe it's okay to contact or to talk with somebody when it's actually against God. So I I understand where you're going with that. 
And I also think, Montel, you know, what you're saying there is spot on about the enemy will, will try to deceive us, especially when we're vulnerable. Um, however, I, I think it's real interesting. That's totally, I totally agree with that. But I think it's interesting that not only will he do that, but he will even tempt people, even if they're not vulnerable. You know, the, 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 the strongest followers of God in the Bible, the, the, the most dedicated, obedient, holy followers of God in the Bible, even they could get tempted by certain things. We know Jesus Amen. even gets tempted by Satan. You know, and it doesn't matter who, how godly a, a Christian is, the most godly Christian on the planet today can still get tempted by stuff, can still get uh, tempted by false doctrine or, or um, deceived by false doctrine. And so it doesn't matter. The, the, the best church on the planet right now could be getting deceived by a false doctrine. doesn't matter how godly they are. You know, the Apostle Paul, as I said earlier, and, and teachers throughout the Bible and the New Testament, we're always saying, you know, to the churches to be careful about false doctrines. So they wouldn't keep repeating that through the New Testament if it wasn't a very big possibility that it can happen to absolutely anyone, uh, anyone of us at all. So as, as you were saying, sister, it's so important to, to know the Word of God. And I also wanted to say, um, I didn't think I... I didn't think I was Go ahead, ever going to get out of that. I didn't think I was ever going to get out of that. I mean, if, if Montel hadn't come at me that day, I probably would have still been living the way, living in that and everything. And um, I didn't think I was ever going to get out of that false doctrine and stuff and get back to being a Christian again and knowing the truth and knowing the real way. Because I was, I mean, they they controlled me so much and everything that I didn't think that there was ever a way out. And I, I saw that as the only way. And I'm glad that I opened my eyes and I'm glad that I was able to get out of that. Yes. Amen. Praise God that you were able to. And, and I know, I know you uh, went through a lot of things like Laura spoke about, like um, the fears, the nightmares, um, I know that it took her a while to recover from all of that, and that's because those spirits get rooted deep in a person, and they're powerful. You know, the Word even tells us it's it's principalities of darkness that we deal with. It's not our flesh. And a lot of people don't want to acknowledge the realness of the demonic forces and the spirits in this world because they they just they don't want to acknowledge it. And But it's important to know the truth. That's why I love when Laura comes on. And shares because in her life firsthand, she's experienced those things. You know, I have a, a brother in Christ that's on fire for God. Um, his name is Bishop Eddie Cheney. In fact, he's going to be here this weekend for a revival, praise God. But he has sat and shared stories with my husband and I. A lot of people say there's no way that's real. When he's delivered demons from people, he's actually been physically attacked before. Like another pastor friend of ours, God rest his soul, anointed man of God. Has had he's been attacked when he's delivered things like they've had marks, literally physical marks, when these demons came out of people, and they said the things that they have witnessed a person would not believe unless they were there firsthand. The stuff is a realness, yeah, yeah. and it's important. They, in fact, his family um, was even telling us uh, one night when we was around the bonfire, they went actually to ground that had been claimed for Satan to take the ground back. This is the truth. And they were camping, and they were having a revival, claiming this is holy ground. And they said that night it sounded like a tornado coming through the woods. There were things breaking, things coming at them, voices and screams. Like the kids today said their hair still stands on the end that witnessed it all. It was a demonic attack of the enemy trying to take them out and move them out of that territory. But they stood firm in it, and because they, you know, they were rooted in God, And he knows the truth, and he knows about discerning spirits. But did it put some fear in them? Yes, it did, because when you're dealing with those kind of forces 
and you really know what they're capable of, you know you're in a serious battle, and you have to be prepared for that battle, and you have to know how to overcome those things. As you were saying, Laura, earlier, in people that have a deliverance ministry, because a lot of times when people come forth like you're talking about and give their life to the Lord, many times they don't ask to be delivered from things. And that's a lot of what happens, mm-hmm. too. They can have these addictions, these spirits, these things with within them, And if they're really not asking for those things to be taken from their life and really knowing when they come forth, see, a lot of people, they think if they speak something out, they're automatically saved. But that's you really have to be delivered of things and have an understanding of what you're asking God to be in your life. They make a lot of people believe that just because something spoke over their life or they repeat it, they're saved. But it has to be a realness in your heart. It's a relationship. It's not just about repeating the words. It's about being delivered, like you said, being set free of all the demonic things in our life before we come to Christ and really asking him to deliver those things. And people can carry those things in their life. I've seen people I know, people that are close to me, thinking that they've been saved. But those things, they were ashamed, as you said. That's what gets a lot of people right there. It's the shame. They're scared to admit to the things that they were doing when they were, you know, living a life away from God. And the enemy will use that shame in their life to try to hold them back. And if you're not asking God to deliver these things of you or not asking for you out of your life, they can attach to your life and keep you from truly being delivered and set free. And that's why I'm so thankful you brought that up today because, you know, like you said, a lot of people don't want to talk about it. But there's power in our testimonies. Mm-hmm. And people need to know the truth. It's okay to to have those things delivered from your life. It's okay to bring it into the light. Otherwise, you're going to stay stuck in the dark. Also, Montel, because of the fact that the, the, the sad fact is many, if not most, Christian churches don't have a deliverance ministry. They think that. Once you become a Christian, the, the demons somehow just all automatically leave, um, and that you know you don't need any of those demons cast out of you. But that's not true. If it was true, put it this way: if that was true, every single time a person came to Jesus, they would have automatic deliverance, and all these demons would come out of them the very moment they say the sinner's prayer. How often do we see that? Rarely, because it takes, um the person to be with Christians who can cast the demons out. It takes them to literally cast them out of you. If you have not had that done, then I'm sorry to say, as horrible as it sounds, they will still be in you. Um, Too many Christians will will go to church and say say to me, you know, I told my pastor I used to be into New Age or I used to be into this or that. And he says, I'm okay, I don't have any demons. Well, is wrong because you will have unless they've been literally cast out you will have them and it impedes your life it's the curses are still there the demons are still there and people don't even realize that you won't feel them most times it's not as if you're under such demonic attack being thrown about your house by you know demons it, it can be very very subtle to the extent of you don't even think you've got any Literally, you will think you don't have any at all, but I can guarantee you if you go for a deliverance session, they will start coming out, and it's it's just a fact, and that's why I'm so glad when programs like this, um, when when other people uh, share stuff like this, because people just need to know they will still have them, and my people perish through, through lack of knowledge. People need to be cleansed to be able to fully walk with, with Christ in a deeper way and um, to really go full hard after Christ deeply to come into their own calling in a deeper way all of these things as accentuated once a person is freed from the demons that they've amassed over the years and one of the things we need to be looking for in regards to um, when we are going to places if you know it could be someone you're connected to in your life, in a church you go to, or a revival you go to. We need to remember any teaching that redefines the person of Jesus Christ. 
doctrine that denies the deity of Christ, the virgin birth, his sinless nature, his actual death, or his physical resurrection is false doctrine, brothers and sisters. A group's errant Christology readily identifies it as a sect or a cult, which Laura has been sharing with us today, that may claim to be Christians but is actually teaching false doctrine like my friend went through and like it rooted in her life. It wasn't her intention for that to happen, but they know how to get in and to do those kind of things. Even many mainline denominations have begun the rapid slide into apostasy by declaring they no longer hold to a literal interpretation of scripture or the deity of Christ. First John four, one through two, Three. Again, that's First John 4, 1 through 3 tells us, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, which Laura was talking about this earlier, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ come in the flesh is from God, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. And we see a lot of that going on in the world nowadays. We need to make it clear that a denial of biblical Christology is Antichrist. Jesus describes false teachers within the church as wolves in sheep's clothing, which you can find in Matthew 7 and 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but in, inwardly are ravenous wolves. Teaching that adds human religions work to Christ, finished work on the cross as necessary ingredients for salvation. This teaching may pay lip service to salvation by faith alone, and we were just speaking about that, but insists that a religious ritual such as a water baptism is Selfic, some groups even legislate hairstyles, clothing options, and food consumption, which my friend was sharing with you earlier. And um, in Romans 11 and 6, it says, but if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basics of works. Other grace, otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. That it warns against attempts to mix grace with works. And Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 teaches us, again, that's Ephesians 8, uh, 2, 8 through 9, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of work, so that no one may boast. It's really important that, as, as Laura was teaching today and as my friend, to really test the spirits and to truly understand their doctrine. And one thing I t to tell people Ask questions because that's you. I really feel like a lot of times there's never a wrong question. If you don't know, ask questions. Ask God to lead you. Ask God to lead you through the Holy Spirit because He will give us wisdom and knowledge. And it's important that we have these things, especially as my friend was sharing, you know, they approached her in love. And she shared that she never thought that she would get drawn in this so deep. But I'm going to tell you something. When you really sometimes don't have an understanding in things or maybe you're not taught, or, you know, a lot of what my friend was in, went through in her life is she wanted to feel loved. She wanted to feel wanted. And a lot of times they see that and they use that to pull people in. And that's what they did with her. You know, she shared her, her what she'd been through in her life with them, and they seen that weakness there, that vulnerability, her wanting to belong, her wanting to be loved. And that's what they did. They played on her emotions. And I truly believe that happens in a lot of places in this world nowadays. I do as well. And, and I think that, you know, a lot of times it's um, done with good motives. The, the people themselves that, that are deceived, those leaders are themselves deceived. And they think that they're doing a good thing by... Um, bringing people under their under their wings that you know I think most of them don't think they're doing something evil um, so it's so sad because they themselves need um, to see the truth and, and be set free as well 
And it's important for people to understand, too, that Satan has been confusing and perverting the word of God since the very Garden of Eden. Um, in Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, the word of God teaches us. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, surely you shall not die. He was trying to make her believe that God was actually lying to her. And he knew the truth. And in Matthew 4 and 6, it says, And said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. And false teachers, the servants of Satan, try to appear as servants of righteousness, but they will be known by their fruits. A uh, Charleston promoting false doctrine will show signs of pride, greed, and rebellion, and will often promote and or engage in sexual immortality. We are wise to recognize how vulnerable we are to heresy and to make it our habit to do as the barons did in Acts 17 and 11. They examine the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. When we make it our go to follow the lead of the first church, we will go far in avoiding the pitfalls of false doctrine. Acts 2 and 42 says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. Such devotion will protect us and ensure us that we are on the path Jesus set for us. And, and, and as we get ready to come into closing, with both of you, do you have any suggestions um, to for people to help them not to get pulled in that way? I know you're really experiencing this stuff, Laura. What are some just suggestions you would make to people to keep them from walking into those paths or into those traps? Yeah, I think really is by going back to the Bible and checking it out, you know, I, as I said, I was already a Christian for quite a few years and yet I got deceived by certain things that were happening in some Christian churches, like people believing they were having regular contact from angels. Now, looking back on it, you'd think I would have known better. But why? Because all of us can be deceived by something, um, no matter what our past has been or, or how much we know the word or whatever. It's just continually... Um, being aware, and that's not meaning that you walk around in fear, expecting to be deceived all the time, but we have to be sensible. If the New Testament teachers were always um, teaching about being aware of, of doctrine and false doctrine, then so should we. I think that's really good advice, and, and you're so right on, because even in the Book of Romans, it tells us that we will all sin and fall short of the glory of God. And many times, mm -hmm. a lot of us honestly, truly don't know, like you said, that what they're doing is wrong, or a lot of people have good intentions, but many times it's from generation to generation that that's what they've been taught, that's what they've been known that is right, and no one's ever shared truth mm -hmm. with them. They're just following what they was raised up in and what they were taught until the truth is brought into their life, and it's received by them. A lot of them stay on that same path, and sadly, that's what we're seeing happening in our world today. That's that we I, everywhere you look, you can see false teachings. You can see people bound in things evil. I mean, even hate in churches and condemnation and things that you know that are not of God. And you really hit the nail on the head when you said it's because a lot of them themselves, even though they think they're doing right, have never been taught truth. And that's why it is so important. As you, with us as children of God that know the truth to be sharing the truth to them. But in love, and you can have a mm -hmm. boldness, but we need to reach them in love and not condemnation, and those things can make people rebel against us. But most of all, with the mm -hmm. leading of the Holy Spirit and how God would help us to reach them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
And to my dear uh, sister that came on today, and it was a big thing for her. I'm so proud of you. And a lot of people may wonder why she wants to be anonymous in it. It's because her life truly was in danger. And a lot of people think, oh, that's not so. But let me tell you something. It is so. And what she went through was very tragic in her life. So she's trying to be cautious because you never know when someone's watching or listening. And I don't want to give an opportunity for her to be harassed or people to come against her again. So if there's anything else you two feel led sharing as we get ready to come into closing, um, I know if people want to contact Laura, they can reach her on Facebook. And um, Laura, do you want to share with some people about some of, uh, some of your books or uh, where they can listen to some of your other radio or TV? Because I really feel like you are a great asset to the kingdom of God and you have a lot of great knowledge and ways to teach people. And I would really like to connect them with that. Well, my story has been printed in various books and magazines and so on, but of course the easiest way for folks is basically to watch any of my TV interviews or listen to my radio interviews or check out my blog articles. And you can do that by going to my website, our spiritualquest.com and my YouTube channel, Laura Maxwell X. Spiritist. I also I also collect a lot of similar types of testimonies and um, teachings that might be helpful for folks that they can find on there as well. Thank you very much for that insight because I know it would be useful to so many people. And as I said, my friend that was on here really uh, was moved by the broadcast I shared that day, and it really opened her eyes and. To my dear friend and sister in Christ, do you have any advice to people, um, you know, and maybe not getting pulled in so far or, you know, when did you see it was time to get out? You know, I just like to always have an opportunity for, for people to, you know, give people other advice in those situations. I noticed it was time to get out when I saw that they weren't using the Bible, the one true word of God that they were using another book besides that. But I had tried previous times to get out, but I couldn't. I just kept getting um, sucked further in and further in. And if it's not of the Bible, not of the Word, then it ain't true because um, – and I just want to encourage somebody that to actually test your spirits and test if it's true or if it's of God and stuff because if it's not – you'll know and you'll find out real real fast and um and, and churches want to be they come they want to approach you in love and kindness and think this is a good church and a place to be but then they pull you into their false doctrines and teachings and but if I hadn't gone through what I went through I don't think I'd be able to um have a testimony today to talk about and I just really encourage people to truly test the spirits because you don't know. Um, there's so many Satan is deceiving, and there's so much out there that will suck you in. And if if anything is not of the Bible, not of the Word of God, then it's false. And what was like the healing process for you? What helped you to get on the road of healing and getting all these things out of your life? Um, basically reading the word prayer and being around my true Christian friends that um, are in my life that lifts me up during my times and stuff and people that have just, um, and people like Gore that have been through it and uh, that's what gets me through and stuff. Because I did have the nightmares and stuff at first, but it took a lot of prayer and a lot of uh, stuff to get through that. And I know I've seen God deliver you of a lot of things that, you know, um, in your life, things that you used to not like about yourself and the way the enemy would try to use you to tear things down in your own life and your families. But praise God, you know, being is your sister in Christ and through the years, I've seen that deliverance in your life. And you actually had to have those things cast out of you, like Laura was talking about. One night I was a part of praying with you. For those deliverances and I have seen 
people be delivered from these spirits. It's a real thing. It's not a joke. And the things you sometime witness, um, you will totally be amazed at. But don't be surprised because it's in the word and it tells us that we battle these principalities of darkness. And I know Laura's even been to church meetings with me before where we've seen people be delivered. It's not a joke, brothers and sisters. It's the demonic spirits, the spirits being attached to people, that is a real thing. That's not that's not just something that's written down just to be there. It's a real thing that God warns us about and prepares us for. Absolutely. I would like to um, add in closing, Montel, that oftentimes people will say, well, I've got quite good at I've got quite a good gift of discernment, I think. Therefore, I tend to know when something is really of God and when it's not. But then they'll give you an example which is shows that, that really actually they are being deceived by something, even currently. And so rather than going by, you think you've got a good sense of discernment or you think it feels good, it feels like God, it feels legitimate, doesn't matter how it feels, or what you think about it, or how discerning you think you are, you still have to go by what the Bible says. For example, when it says um, about not talking with these familiar spirits, or, you know, it's not your dear grandma, then believe what the Bible says, rather than saying, well, maybe this time it really is my dead grandma. No, whether you feel it is, or you think you discern it is or not, go by the Bible because that, like our sister friend said a moment ago, testing the spirits is by what does the Bible say about that actual situation. Amen. That being that's the ultimate such powerful test truth. of the Bible. Amen. That's, that's the powerful truth. That's the answer right there. I am so grateful that both of you were on here with me today. And please keep us updated with... Uh, things going on in your life, Laura, and um, I like to share, you know, your ministry with other people. It's a powerful thing. God's using you in an amazing way, but you're still such a humble, loving woman, and that's another thing. People don't get puffed up in things, and, you know, something else, too, before I close out, God's bringing this into my spirit right now, and I don't know if a lot of other people listening or maybe both of you, and I'm not seeing everyone on Facebook that does things for prophets that our claim to be prophet or prophetess are false. But I do want people to be careful of something because I've been noticing lately there's so many people that go on doing videos claiming to be prophets or prophetess, but one of their main focuses is, is to get you to pay them for a word of God. When you're paying people mm-hmm. for a word of God, it's almost more like you, they're, you're treating them like a psychic. God would not inquire us to pay for a word from him. That's given freely by the Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. We can get that one-on-one ourselves. But people are getting caught up in this. And it's been saddening my heart because I'm talking about thousands many times following these people, begging for a word. And something else you Mm -hmm. need to learn and understand in life, just because they say they're a prophet or prophetess like Laura was sharing, test the spirit because the things, if you get so wound up and maybe wanting to hear something good spoke over your life or about money or you being with somebody or different things, you're getting out of the will of God. You're more looking at psychic things. And if you're paying people for these things, brothers and sisters, and you're you're believing more in what the word is they're going to give you, you're getting out of the will of God and understanding what a true message is from God. When God gives a word through a prophet or a prophetess, it's usually for healing and for teaching and it's not about trying to find out if I'm going to be rich tomorrow. Is that new man coming in my life? But these are things I'm seeing a lot on social media. So be careful in that. As Laura was saying, test the spirits. Really see if they know their Bible. You know, that would be a question you could ask anyone that's on their live saying that they're a prophet or prophet. Te- have them t- test the spirits and have them see if they can back up things they're saying with the scripture because you can get pulled into a web of deceit and start believing these lies because there are false prophets and teachers out there. So I really feel led to share that with you today because I see tons of them on my news feed every day. And I've been seeing that happening a lot all over on social media. It's like a great big new wave that's coming through. And I don't know if either one of you have seen these posts on Facebook, but uh, 
through other friends sharing and stuff, I have seen them, and I've been trying to warn people, you know, be careful of what you're doing, and, you know, don't be paying these people for a word and test these spirits because that's how people get sucked into a lot of this evilness. I've not seen it, but um, it, it, it is really sad, and, and I think, you know, the, the, the Bible does say, freely we have received, freely given. We don't see the disciples charging for money when they were going about healing the sick, casting out demons, prophesying and so on. Um, also, I think that it, it, it is also possible that some of these people are genuinely prophetic, genuinely are being used of, of the Holy Spirit um, to prophesy. However, again, things must be tested. So on the one hand, they could be used by the Holy Spirit one of the times they prophesy, and yet another time they prophesy, they're not being used by the Holy Spirit simply because there is such a thing as the mixing of spirits, you know, um, that they won't even realize um, that sometimes they're actually speaking, prophesying from a, a false spirit, which again, the Bible does talk about that when there were uh, lying spirits in the mouths of prophets. So, Again, you know what I said earlier, the, the Apostle Paul, the, the teachers, the writers through the New Testament, they were warning the churches to be careful and to test everything, not just from so-called um, outright false prophets, mm -hmm. but even, yes, even those who are used of God can make these mistakes at times too. And a lot of it too, nowadays you see two people are getting more concerned with having likes and popularity and things like that as well and about self-glory instead of God's glory. And that's a lot of what's going on in the world today too. And we want to be careful in those things. It's important for us to stay humble and glorify God in all we do, brothers and sisters, because it's not about our glory. It's about God our Father's glory. So mm -hmm. I really appreciate you mm -hmm. both being on here today. You're always, both are always welcome back. And, my dear sister that came on today, again, I'm proud of you. You've overcame so much. You've been through so much in your life. I love hearing both of your testimonies and what God can do. Remember, nothing is impossible with God, but it's important to know the truth and to test the spirits. And please, if you have more questions in these matters, Laura is an amazing woman with great knowledge in all this because she lived it in her life. She has come out of these things, and you've heard her testimony today, but I'm sure she'd be happy to speak with you or go check out her YouTube channel. And she shares, like she said, other testimonies like uh, Brother Jerry Blaze that used to be a host on here, and I hope sometime he gets to come back. He was going through some things with uh, before he lost his father to illness, and I've been there myself, but he has the same kind of testimony, you know, and Laura's familiar with Jerry. So there's so many mm -hmm. out there that have came out of these things, but praise God, they're now saved and they're set free. But you truly, as Laura was saying earlier, you got to be delivered of those things that have attached to your life. So please keep, please keep uh, checking our broadcast out here and reaching out radio. Again, you can find uh, Laura on Facebook. It's Laura Maxwell. And also again on YouTube, look her up because her stuff is really worth, learning about and understanding and sometimes you can't just do it in one broadcast you know I'd like to get in deep and study and we can learn from one another so I thank you so much Laura for coming on today to share your testimony again to give us some knowledge in these things and some direction and appreciate you so much and may God continue to use you and bless you in the work that you're doing for his kingdom and to my dear friend God bless you dear and uh I am, again, so proud of you, and just keep on doing what you're doing, and, you know, you know already that God loves you and where he's brought you from, and thank you for choosing to be a voice today, because that took courage. You're welcome. You're welcome, my pleasure. Thank you, and thank you to your dear friend for sharing as well. Well, God bless both you ladies. God bless all of our listeners. Know that God loves you. Don't back down when he's backing you up. As long as there's a breath in you, there is hope. And God has a purpose and plan in your life. But as they were teaching today, test the spirits. 
back things up with the word of God. If it doesn't line up with the word of God, it's not biblical truth. Get away from it. We love you here on Reaching Out Radio International, where we're reaching out to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, sharing the gospel and the message of the cross into the world. We love to share truth about end times and prophecies and false doctrines and things of this world. We're really about teaching people the truth here, and we're not going to sugarcoat it. We're not trying to offend you, but we love you enough to tell you the truth. This is Evangelist Montel Fields getting ready to sign off, and again, I thank my special guest today, Laura Maxwell, an amazing woman, a powerhouse for God. God bless you again, dear sister. Have a blessed day ahead. And everyone, please be praying for our revival. It started last night. It was an amazing move of God last night and blessed me so much. We're going to have revival all the way through Sunday. And we got people coming in from out of state um, on Friday. And they're going to be here the remainder of the weekend for revival. So pray for their travels as well. Father God, I just lift this broadcast up to you today, God. I pray, dear God, that most of all, first, you be glorified in it. Lord, use it to bring truth into people's lives that are lost in the darkness, Father God. Lord, give us a better understanding of these things, God. And, Lord, for those, dear God, that don't have understanding, Lord, I pray, dear God, that you help them to have wisdom and knowledge, Father God. Lord, use us to share truth and be a light in the dark, Father God. As Laura shared earlier, Father God, many people think they're doing right and have good intentions, but they've never known the truth, Father God. So, Lord, Father God, I pray that you reach those people, God, and that you bring people into their life to shed the light in their darkness, God. Let them know truth, Father God, because we want to see people saved, delivered, and set free in eternal salvation Mm -hmm. through your son, Jesus Christ, Father God. And bless both of my dear sisters, Father God for them taking time to come on today and share. God, I already know that you use Laura in such an amazing, powerful way, God. And I thank you for her testimony, God. And I thank you for her faithfulness, dear God, and her love for the people to share the truth, God. I really see her as a warrior in the army of God. And I pray that you just protect my friend and you watch over her, encourage her, and continue to use her, Father God, as a voice going forth. I give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to send us. I'm going to send us out um, with a song and continue to watch on our home page um, for upcoming broadcasts. We have regular scheduled programs, and God's doing some new changes in uh, in the radio, and I thank Him for that. But on the home page, you can even go back to, I, I encourage people, too, that I want to put that out there. Go back on the home page, just go on Reaching Out Radio's home page. And if you scroll down, it has all of our episodes. And there's several on there with Laura and Jerry. They were powerful, powerful broadcasts. You can go back and listen to those. You can share those like I did a while back ago. It's always free to listen. The on-demand links are available uh, 365 days a year. Seven days a week, around the clock. All you have to do is click on that episode, and you can listen to it. So I encourage you to do that because there's some good stuff there through a lot of amazing men and women. So um, check it out. And, again, Laura, thank you for your time. And um, just God bless you for all you're doing, honey. You're an amazing woman in Christ. Well, God bless you. You're, you're way too kind in saying all of that. Um, but, but thank you again for having me on. And God bless your listeners and your friend too. Thank you. Take care. And I look forward to having you on again and for you sharing with us as God keeps taking you forth. And we're going to close out with thank one you. of my favorite songs. It's, you are so welcome. It's called You Deserve the Glory. <laughs> 